Due to the sensitivity of caves and cave life, as well as the small number of people who are active cavers, there is relatively little information either in print or online about where to find caves and how to visit them. There are of course many commercial caves that are visited by millions of people each year, and these usually have paved trails, stairs, handrails, and permanently installed lighting. Commercial tours are a great way to get introduced to the cave environment, and these tours often include some explanation of geology and hydrology and the uniqueness of cave life. These tours usually give the visitor the opportunity to safely view rare and delicate cave formations, and there is often a brief exposure to the total darkness of the natural cave environment. Venturing into undeveloped caves is often described as wild caving and is the primary interest of most caving enthusiasts. There are a wide range of reasons for visiting wild caves that might include sport or recreation, map making and exploration, or scientific study. Most cavers begin and develop their interests in wild caving by going on recreational trips. Some commercial caves offer wild caving tours that involve some climbing and crawling, and there are some professional guiding services that also provide wild caving adventures. A few civic groups and clubs, some university outing clubs, and many scouting groups also offer caving trips for their members, but these may not be open to the public. The best way for most people to learn about caves and experience a beginner cave trip is through clubs scattered across the U.S. known as grottos. These grottos are internal organizations of the National Speleological Society, and there are more than 200. Grottos have regular meetings and often have beginner cave trips and the best way to experience wild caving safely and responsibly is to get in touch with members of these groups who could help teach you the right equipment and behaviors to prevent injury, protect the cave environment, and have the most fun. There are a wide variety of types of caves. The most common and widely recognized are solutional caves that are formed in limestone, but there are also solutional caves that form in other types of rocks such as dolomite, gypsum, marble, and even salt. These caves form by the slow dissolution of minerals by acidic water. There are regions of the U.S. including the Appalachian states of West Virginia, Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, and northern Alabama and Georgia that contain large numbers of caves and some of the longest caves in the world. Other regions of the U.S., including the Ozark Mountains of Missouri and Arkansas, southern New Mexico, and the Black Hills of South Dakota also contain many significant solutional caves. In volcanic areas, there are often lava tubes, which usually form in basalt and can be many miles long. The Pacific Northwest and Hawaii contain many long and complex lava tubes. Caves can also form in sandstone or quartzite, and there are claystone or soil piping caves formed by the selective erosion of sediment or soft rock. In areas where there's been geologic uplift, tectonic caves can form from the shifting or sliding of boulders or slabs that creates interconnected voids beneath the surface. In coastal areas, sea caves can form from the erosional forces of waves and tides, and caves can also form in the ice of glaciers from melting or erosion from geothermal activity or the flow of meltwater. With all of these different types of caves, they can be found in many areas across the U.S. and provide recreational opportunities for cavers. Most caves are formed by water and continue to be conduits for carrying rainfall or snowmelt from the surface to springs or groundwater aquifers, so caves are often wet and muddy. If you get more than a few hundred feet from an entrance, they will be completely dark, and the only way to safely travel through them is to bring your own source of light. Cave passages can vary dramatically in size from being too small for humans to being large enough to fly through in a commercial jet. Caves may be predominantly horizontal and easily traveled without technical equipment or they may be very deep with vertical pits and domes that require ropes and rappelling and ascending gear to explore. Some cave passages or entire cave systems may be below the water table and fully flooded, requiring specialized diving gear and training to visit. The temperature of caves in the U.S. may vary from around freezing to as high as 70 Fahrenheit, but most caves range from about 45 to 60 degrees, 
and are typically the same temperature year-round. Caves tend to be at the average annual temperature of the surface where they are located, so caves at higher latitudes and higher elevation tend to be colder, and caves closer to the equator and sea level tend to be warmer. Because caves are the same temperature year-round, and they are dark all the time, it is often possible to visit them at any time of the day or in any season, and the experience will be the same. Caves can be home to a wide diversity of animals and organisms that often have unique adaptations to survive and thrive in the cave environment. Cave life is often classified into one of three categories. Troglozines utilize caves, but also spend time above ground. Examples of troglozines are bats, pack rats, bears, mountain lions, and cavers. Troglophiles may venture onto the surface for food, but they spend most of their lives underground and they often are heavily adapted to the darkness and low nutrient environment of the cave. Some examples of troglophiles are cave crickets, beetles, and salamanders. The final category of cave life are troglobites. Troglobites have fully adapted to the cave environment and they often lack eyes or pigment, and they have a low metabolism that allows them to survive for long periods of time without food. Examples of troglobites are cave fish, cave adapted isopods, and many types of microbes. For more information on caves, the cave environment, or cave life, visit the National Speleological Society website at caves.org. Click the button that says find a caving club near you to learn about nearby grottos and attend a meeting. Engaging with experienced cavers in your local caving community is a great way to learn about the importance of safety and conservation, and the best way to learn about opportunities to take your first caving trip.